Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. Today I'm making Kansas wheat bread. So you need a half a cup of warm water. Now when they say warm water, that's risk. Do not take it from the faucet because if you do, you're gonna get sediments from your heating unit and that attacks your liver and gives you liver problems further down the road. Anybody who recommends doing that is not in your best interest of health. All right, you need two packages of yeast. If you have a jar of yeast, that's four teaspoons and a half a teaspoon. keep your yeast close to your butter compartment in your refrigerator. It seems to be the right temperature. You cannot freeze it. Now all that you have to do is put a drop on your wrist and if it's wrist temperature it's full. Just throw it down on top of your yeast and then we're going to let this set now. We are going to take in another bowl and add two and a half cups of whole wheat flour and two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And we're going to mix those two flours together. Always check the dates on your yeast. Now, if you only have bread flour and cake flour and you said I can't make this bread because I don't have all-purpose flour, you can make all-purpose flour by blending four cups of bread flour with one cup of cake flour. You will have the flour perfectly for all-purpose. Everybody tries to change the recipe to make their own all-purpose, but that is the original ratio, one to four. And I will be making mayonnaise, and this uh, the next time I make mayonnaise, I'm going to bring you over to the store because people say I have to see visually what you're doing. So I will make sure that you can visually see how we make the cooked mayonnaise. Now remember, the mayonnaise I make is cooked mayonnaise, and it is not the one you shake up in a jar and keep in the refrigerator because when you take that one out, it separates. My mayonnaise does not separate, so you can take it. It's you can take it to a picnic and leave it on the table and not worry about it. So I will show you how to do that. Now they want you to mix these flowers together. I already know why, but I'll go through the steps. We're going to be doing a lot of mixing different grains very shortly for sourdoughs that come from Europe. So we've got a treat coming. I'm just giving you enough time learning to work with flowers and stuff. And you say I may probably make a lot of bread. Yeah, I do. My, my sons can make a whole meal out of a loaf of bread, so I <laughs> really have to stay up on it, so I'm always careful to make it as nutritious as I can and everything else for them. Now we're going to put this to the side, only because I'll probably run out of room. Now what we're going to do to add to this is we are going to stir in a half a cup of powdered milk. Be 
contain jars. See, my yeast is already foaming. It's just that active. That's why I say check those dates. Because stores will sell you outdated yeast. You gotta be on your toes. They don't keep track of some of that. You should always check the dates on everything that you buy in the store. One and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm using my salt mixture. Everything put in this you a teaspoon of ground ginger. You better say, say what? Yes, you're gonna put in a teaspoon of ground ginger. So you can imagine how good this bread is gonna be. Okay, we pretty much got everything else going. All right, we need one and a half cups of alcohol beer i am using a guinnesses <laughs> don't worry the bread isn't going to make you drunk because you're going to cook the alcohol out of it now to pour beer so you don't get the foam so you can measure tilt let me get the water out of this tilt your measuring cup and pour slowly on the side not to the bottom on the side of it you see it won't be the foam and that's what you're working on and they want one and a half cups that is the whole trick of this Well, my son's going to get upset. I am going into another one of his. We will try another light. <laughs> Add to it. up where it has to go. Yep. There. Empty two bottles out in one shot. Well, he won't be happy about it. <laughs> but I'll tell him when he gets up. Okay. Now we're going to add a third of a cup of molasses. This bread has a lot of good stuff in it, which is really, really good. Molasses has a lot of iron in it. When I was pregnant, I had two tablespoons a day to make sure I kept my iron content up. So when my sons were born, there would be no problem with their iron count doctor and I had an argument. He said, he needs iron. I said, he does not. He said, yes, he doesn't. He and I were going at it in the doctor's office, the pediatric office, I should say. And he was yelling at me and I was telling him, no way in heaven am I going to give my son that. And my son said, wait a minute, test his blood and see. I won. His iron was up. Doctor couldn't dispute it with me. They had no iron problem. Their iron was way up there. Good, healthy iron count. 
And all what I did was take two tablespoons of molasses every day, one with breakfast and one right after supper. All right, we need three tablespoons of butter softened. This is my modified butter that I make that I'm going to use. It's got a nice flavor to it. I like it. Sometimes it's difficult to get out but what butter isn't. Okay. I'll fill that in too. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to put in a whole teaspoon of grated orange peel. So I have to get my grinder up because I dehydrated all my orange peels, but I don't grind them up until I need them, and here they are. So let me get that out and we'll grind that up. at the grocery store it was next skin to impossible so I said you know since I can lemon juice and I can uh, I collect the orange peels and I grated them up I even collected grapefruit because I'm going to need the grapefruit peelings as well but when we get to those recipes you're going to need and you're not going to find it in the store that should do it I think the peelings. Well, if I didn't, I'll be doing them again, so you'll catch it a second time around. Oh, and by the way, to all the new subscribers, welcome aboard. Let's have fun in the kitchen. I do have my low days, but I feel good today. All right, now they want me to use my mixer, which I am not going to do. I'm going to do this by hand. It doesn't make sense. I've got everything in here except for when we need the grapes, but we don't need that right now, so. If you have a mixer, you're doing it by mixer. If you have it heavy duty, they want you to add a half a cup at a time and beat it in. And then when you're done beating all that in, you're gonna have to sit there and knead it. Since I'm gonna knead it anyway, I said, well, I'll go ahead and do it this way. I know my butter was a little cold, but I really don't care about that because when I get done handling it and kneading it, it's going to get very soft very, very quickly. This bread has excellent flavor. I have barely made a dent in all the bread recipes I have. Most of the things I show you on this channel, you can actually sit there. You usually have most of the stuff in the house already, you know, to make your biscuit or if you want to make uh, self-rising cornmeal or things like this or make your own baking powder or, or enrich your salt and stuff. A lot of the stuff you already have around and making different combinations and stuff. That's if you bake. If you buy everything pre-made, you're not you're, you don't have anything that you need to work with. I read up on cake uh, mix 
pieces and what they have in those and I'm going, uh, I'm going to start checking out my cake patterns and see if there's a basics to it that you can make at home on your own. And then that way you get away from the preservatives and then we can enrich it. Hold back about a cup if you're using the electric mixer so you can sit there and have some flour to knead with. I'm going to need to the sink to maneuver with this bowl is going to come out. The dough is going to come out of the bowl. If I remember correctly, I think I had to add extra flour to this recipe when I made it the first time. I remember going to bake shops and buying sourdough bread because I couldn't bake where I was at at the time. And uh, I'm adding hot water to this if your water run. And they charge so much money for such a small loaf. As soon as I could uh, start baking, I didn't go back, but I didn't, I didn't like playing that amount of money for it. Now, if you have to add extra flour to me, do not go above a half a cup. And I'm going to continue weaving this and getting it elastic so we can get it this way. So I'll see you again. Okay, I just washed my bowl out with hot water. I had to use a little extra flour to finish kneading it, but it's ready now to do its rising and do what it does so well. on the bottom, twist it around to make sure it's thoroughly coated. You don't want it to dry out. This is not a sourdough. This is regular yeast. And if it dries out, you won't be able to work with it. And then we're going to cover this up. And we're going to let it do what it normally does. Rise. And when it's risen, I will be back. Right now I'm going to clean my mess up. And 
too and start putting these noodles together. Okay, so I'll see when that's risen. Okay, the bread has doubled and uh, let me plug you in so you don't lose energy. And we'll get this going. Let me move you back a little so I can get the plug in you. What you're going to do is pinch this in half. All right. Knee just a little bit. Pinch it up where it seals underneath, which is very important. Make a little ball and put it on a greased sheet. That's exactly what you're going to do. And we're gonna uh, let them double. They said it'll take about an hour. And then we're going to be baking them but we have to, uh, a glaze that we're going to be putting on them. Let me put this on the table so it can rise. Cover them, and we'll get the mixture for the glaze done. Just give me a minute. We're gonna need molasses and water. Once again, measuring spoons. Let me use which size do I need? Hold on, and I'll be with you. Tablespoons and teaspoons. Sorry about that. You need one tablespoon of molasses, and you're gonna need One and a half teaspoons of water. So I got a half a teaspoon, I'll just use three of them. Okay, get a fork and you're going to whisk this together. Now we're not going to brush this on right now. We're going to brush this on right before we put them in the oven. You know, it's so funny when you go to the store, you buy 
bread and you're so limited. But when you sit there and you make your own bread, oh my goodness. What you can't make. I'm just trying to mix it up really thoroughly. Now you're going to put this on the side and we are going to let those double and then I will be back. 